Hello and welcome to Talking Defense, Raphael's Defense Magazine. Every program is uh, dedicated to a different subject with all relevant experts, data and aspects here in the studio and from around the world. And today, one-on-one -on -one with Raphael's president and CEO. the studio is Yoav Areven, President and CEO of Raphael. Thank you very much, sir, for joining me today. It's been a crazy 2020. You started it expecting one thing, you ended it re receiving a totally different thing. But first, the COVID-19, the coronavirus, which forced you to change everything because yeah. you had to keep on manufacturing, but you had to do it differently. So I think that, first of all, we changed all the culture of how we manage the company. Uh, of course, at the, on the production line, you have to separate the shifts. On the engineering sites uh, and groups, you have to, to, sp to split uh, the groups. Uh, uh, the way that you connect to the customers was totally different. Uh, and I think that the key for this success were, first of all, agility. The second thing is the way that the people do the adaption uh, very quick. Uh, and this is the unique uh, human resource that we have in Rafael. Uh, the second thing is leadership. Uh, we were very focused. We gave the goals, we gave the orders. We didn't wait to someone to tell us what to do. Uh, and of course, uh, the way that we were able uh, to develop new approach uh, and uh, different ways of, uh, you know, managing the whole process. One more thing you have is uh, reliability. Your customers knew that you will get to them, you will fix what needs yeah. to be fixed, you will uh, deliver what needs to be delivered, and the corona is not an excuse for anything. Yeah, I think that, that the customer uh, appreciate it very much. For example, I think today, uh, uh, at the end of the year, we shipped the second battery of Iron Dome. They didn't believe that we are going to supply two Iron Dome batteries during the year, although the COVID-19. We were able to supply uh, uh, just in time all the trophy system to the US Army. Uh, and this is only one, two examples, but we did it all over the, the world, uh, except, except for few places that we had problem with the chain of supply. Uh, but I think that we achieved all our goals. I bet that when it started in about March, you were sure that this year is going to be uh, disastrous yeah. uh, economic-wise. It didn't end like that, right? No. Ex what, 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 how come? I think that when we started, uh, we had a lot of discussion with the uh, with the with our board, uh, and they asked us uh, uh, to give them different scenario. Uh, so we gave the optimistic, the realistic, and the pessimistic. At the end of the year, I think we did even better than the optimistic one. How come? I think, first of all, people were very focused. Uh, we were able to, to give the priorities. Uh, we were able uh, uh, to develop new concept of managing the old processes. Uh, and I think we also were able uh, 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 to speak in a different way to different customers. By the way, we found that the customers became also very flexible. This changed everything for the future as well? Or when the corona is over, you will go on flying, go on selling? Or maybe the Zoom is the solution for everything? Well, I think it's a question of balance. Uh, we still need uh, the personal touch with the customer when you speak about product, when you speak about concept. It's not enough to do it virtually, on the virtual, but I think that we will have a, a different balance. It will not go back to the way it was, but I assume it will not stay as it is. So let's speak about the future uh, you have. What does it hold for Rafael? Because on one hand, you are at, uh, at the cutting edge of technology yeah. and everything. On the other hand, are there going to be any budgets, uh, budgets after the corona is over? So I think that, first of all, we will continue to be on the cutting edge technology. Uh, and this is our uniqueness. We will continue to develop the cutting edge technology system. Uh, but on the same time, we'll be, uh, we will have to adapt ourselves uh, to the customer needs and to the customer limitation of budget. But you know, 
if you do a zoom out, I don't think that the, the, the operational needs had, uh, had changed. Uh, they remain the same, you know, it's a question of priority. And by the way, you cannot generalize the whole world. I think that in, in Europe it's a different story, in the Far East it's a different story, in the United States it's a different story. So everyone wants the same capabilities that they were speaking with us a year ago. Of course, we might find some places that it will be a little bit slower. But you know, on the overall look, I think it will take us, we will continue to act according to our strategy with the same product. Maybe it will get a, a little bit, it will be a little bit slower. The Middle East has changed dramatically in the last year. We saw the Abraham Accords. You served in the army as a general. You know the army, the Israeli IDF very well. How do you see the future for Rafael within this new Middle East? Well, I think that the, the challenges to, to the state of Israel didn't change, as a matter of fact. Oh, well, you know, you speak about Iran, you speak about Lebanon, Hezbollah, uh, the Gaza Strip. They are here and they are going to stay. There might be some opportunities. Uh, we might find some new markets. Uh, so this is on the opportunity side. Uh, but on the other hand, I think that if they will uh, speak with us and they would like to, 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 to part purchase from us product, it will be only the product that are relevant to the threats. And, and we share the same threats, by the way. So I think there are a lot of opportunities. And looking at the future, uh, we spoke of uh, uh, cutting edge technology. It all relies on R&D. You have to have the best R&D. Yeah, I think that uh, uh, when you look at the, on, the, on the numbers, how much uh, money do we invest in R&D? So I think that we invest more than almost 10% of our, uh, uh, from our revenue in pure R&D, in, in a self R&D. On top of it, you have another uh, 75 percent uh, more than that you get from the, the, the most of it from the government of Israel. So I think that we are doing almost 40, more than 40 percent from our revenue is R&D. So you can imagine that 50 percent of the personnel in Rafael is doing R&D. Is working morning. for the future, for the not future. For, the, uh, for, the future. for the present. Yeah, but, but again, for the future, you're speaking about three years from now and 10 years from now and 20 years from now. And one word about uh, uh, um, affiliations and connections around the world, because you have connections, not only of customers, but other yeah. uh, 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 businesses that you work with, are the governments, et cetera, et cetera, uh, uh, factories that you hold around the world. So part of our strategy is uh, to work with local partners all over the world. So if you look at the United States, our strategy is to work with the tier one company. We're working with Lockheed Martin with the Spike and Loss. We're working with, working with DRS for the Trophy, with Raytheon uh, for the Iron Dome, and with Northrop Grumman for the uh, Lightning Pod, and with BAE for the uh, RCWS. On the same time, we understand that we must have uh, a local entity in the United States, in India, in Europe, in order to make our product localized. So it's a balance between working in a team group with other companies and establish our so own. So Rafael company. is an Israeli, very, very international company. Yeah. And we are going to, look, to do it in the future even more. And looking at 2021, you expect a better year than the one yeah. that ended? I think that we will uh, go back to, to to increase our revenue, and we will continue to develop the most advanced cutting edge technology system, first of all, to the IDF, and then to the rest of the world. And one last question, if I asked you, what are you proud of the most the in Rafael? Of, the people of Rafael. I think that this year, uh, they show me again that they, that they can do everything. The sky is, is the limit. As a matter of fact, the space is the limit. You have our event, President and CEO of Rafael. Thank you so much for joining me today. And that's all from us today. We'll be back shortly with another edition of Talking Defense. Until then, stay safe and stay tuned. Bye-bye.